It's so difficult, though, to, to prepare for a team that is as balanced as USC is. Who are you going to take away? If you take away Elijah Stewart, then that, leave, that leaves Jordan McLaughlin free to just fed you. That, that's what makes them so difficult to guard. Casey, how nice is it to have your point guard McLaughlin leading the team in field goal percentage, 57 from the floor? You don't. Have, you don't ever see that because normally the little guys have a harder time finishing around the rim, but that's actually one of Jordan McLaughlin's best strengths. Shaquan Aaron will start at the free throw line. We'll talk about balanced scoring. Eight different Trojans have scored at least 13 points in a game this season. Here are their top five. And all of these guys are shooting a high percentage, uh, you know, with the exception of Shaquan Aaron, but he's shooting 44%, J.B. 71 at the free throw line. He opens the scoring. Put the foul on Jordan Varnado. And Aaron rolls home the second. Aaron is one of the more streaky players on this court. He's a guy that if he gets going early, and that's why it's you know important that he gets to see two free throws go through the net. That might be danger for Troy tonight. Devon Walker operating off the bounce. This is Wesley Person trying to shake Elijah Stewart in the first three. And he has the green light. Anytime he can squeeze off a shot, in, in, even in a sliver of daylight, he is going to do it. And just like Shaquan Aaron, he too is streaky. Led the Sun Belt and made threes last season with 96. McLaughlin is stripped. He goes to the floor to secure it. Up ahead to Kevin Baker, the assist leader for this Troy team. Misses from the same spot that Person just hit. We're going the other way on a rebounding foul. All right, Wesley Person Jr. is going to be running off of screens all night long. Have the discipline to stay down. If he wants to take a 22-foot contested three, let him. But if you go for the fake, then you're only opening up for an easier look. Now you said Junior, his father Wesley, and Uncle Chuck Pearson, both standouts at Auburn collegiately, played in the league. I played against his dad. My rookie year, I was in 2003, I was a member of the Phoenix Suns, and Wesley Pearson Sr. was a member of the Memphis Grizzlies. That makes me feel pretty old. I mean, I'm only 35 years old, but I've played against this guy's dad? Come on, man. <laughs> Meanwhile, two personal fouls on Alex Hicks. He has to be replaced by Juan Davis Jr., Picks up Chemezi Metsu. Stewart on the inbound. New shot clock for USC as he goes to work off the bounce. A low percentage shot sent out of bounds. By the way, Casey Jacobson, congratulations at the uh, ripe young age of 35. <laughs> now a Stanford University graduate. Thank well done, you, my JB. friend. I appreciate that. For Not last... just finals week for the Trojans, oh. for you as well. For the last two and a half months, I've been finishing my undergrad degree at Stanford. The finals was last week, and it kicked my butt. I'm happy to be here with you right now. <laughs> Kosovic kicking some butt in the post down low. And they're going to need him. I mean, this is an undersized Troy University team. So Rakosovic could, this could be his night to kind of get uncorked a little bit. He's coming off a career best game, 13 points against Pepperdine, although most of that damage was done at the free throw line. Uh, Davis right now the Vin Trojan settling for threes against the man-to-man -man defense of USC. Aaron in transition, pulls from McLaughlin. It was right all the way. The easy rebound for Bernardo. And now he gets the three-point attempts. So thing from behind the arc so far for the Trojans. Bernardo's their leading scorer, a guy that can basically do it all, and I'm actually surprised to see him jack a three early. Normally he's a guy that likes the power game more. He's a slasher, but he is capable of shooting from deep, obviously. And Stewart off a cross screen, falling away. Well defended on the block by Walker. That was one of those where he already made up his decision before the ball even touched his hand. Elijah Stewart said, I'm shooting it no matter what. Person hit and a free throw to follow. So one from each wing for Wesley Person Jr. Again, last year's Sun Belt leader and made threes. Just a simple dribble handoff, no communication right there. You have to know exactly who the shooters are, and when the dribble happens, a switch needs to occur and a switch with high hands. Neither happened, and they give up the easy one. Put the foul on Elijah Stewart. He gets pulled, and they put... DeAndre DeAnthony Milton in. He's one of their kind of lockdown defenders that they'll deploy in a situation like this, maybe to cool off someone like Person. And he's been one of the best sixth men in Pac-12. It doesn't matter what class you're talking about. Freshman, sophomore, this guy happens to be in his first year at USC. Very impressive, number two in white. 
The pass gets through his hands, but Troy trying to get out on the break. Stepped on the sideline. Shot clock did not reset, so seconds left for USC. Now they're going to run a high ball screen for Jordan McLaughlin. They're likely going to go right away with only 10 seconds. A USC trying to break out of a 7-0 Troy run. Eight to shoot for McLaughlin. Metsu sets that high screen. A crossing over on the mismatch off one foot. A good defensive stand so far for Troy. They've got a 10-4 lead. They are not a big team like I mentioned before, so when you run ball screens, they are likely going to switch. They have versatile defensive players. Metsu rejects Walker twice with some help from Rakosevic. And Casey said it off the top. This USC group went off a school record 14 blocks against Pepperdine. Look, it's one thing to be long. It's another thing to know how to use that length. And Chemezi Metu right there, JB, avoids the foul and then contests very late. That's the key to being a good shot blocker in today's game. Bernardo goes right at him. Not intended. Jordan Bernardo, sophomore from Tennessee, the leading scorer, just shy of 16 per night. Oh, he's not going to be shy at all. He's very confident. And he knows that if they have any chance of the upset tonight, JB, then Bernardo's going to have to have a big game. Uh, punched out on the block of Rakosevic. McLaughlin to the rim, and Metu gets SC out of the funk. You got an injured player down there. Juan Davis Jr. on the baseline. And here's the block, the initial block. And sticking with it. And later on in the play, here's the finish. Just throw it up. Like, it doesn't even matter. Just throw it anywhere up on the board, JB, and let Chemezi Metu go and get it. Looks like a right leg or ankle injury. I think he stepped on somebody's foot. For Davis. Right Maybe coming here. down from this block. Yeah, right on recruit. Yep. Yep. Right there is his right ankle. He knew it right away. So that gets Yo Moravec, a junior from Slovakia, into the game with the basketball here, center of the floor. That's a, it's a big blow, JB. Juan Davis averages, you know, almost double figures, even though he only plays 16 minutes a night. I mean, he's instant offense for them. A person has been all offense so far for Troy. His third made three. He's got 10 points. Okay. He's made 26 threes on the season already. And he's one of those guys that he'll either shoot you in or shoot you out. Right now, he's three for three from the line. USC has got to identify him, and they can't help whatsoever. I don't care what plays they're running. Metu misses the jumper. Loose ball rebound saved by Troy. But USC will get it back with a new clock. And they've also got Charles Bugs into the game. And My guy, you don't talk about my guy, <laughs> JB, like that. Thanks, we appreciate it. <laughs> Jordan McLaughlin and the Trojans back at it. Trailing early. That's great action off the baseline. OB met couldn't pay it off, but you like what Enfield and company drew up there. Absolutely, and that's you know if you're going to draw up a play, why not utilize the advantage that you have with Chemezi Metu and his length at the rim? And he's got to finish that though. He knows that he'd like to have that one back. So USC starts two of ten from the floor. And missing from three there, Jeremy Holloman just ended the contest. This man, Person, has had the hot hand. Ten points already. A loose ball rebound to Walker. A look at the rotation. Back in the hands of Person. So he misses back-to-back, -back and McLaughlin fouled on the rebound. The three-point shooting has been the story thus far. Troy is four for eight from the three-point line. And Southern Cal right now just 0 for one. Walker takes the foul. It's his first. Here comes Daniel Peace, senior from Decatur, Georgia. As Kevin Baker sits. Double high screen for McLaughlin. And drops it down. A lot of deflections in the half court for Troy defensively. Well, that was a no-look pass by Bugs. Not a good decision right there. Just make the simple one. Metu finds him on the baseline from a tuckle. And that is the simple play right there. The big, the pass in, in tight quarters, which is often difficult. you got to make those passes with a little bit of touch. You can't just rifle it at your fellow big. But Bugs is a guy that does have touch around the rim if he gets deep post position. Well, Pearson's light is greener than green, Casey. <laughs> Reminds me of myself 
back in the day. I love it. Aaron to Melton, extra pass, and a charge. And Chemezi off to a nice start right here with the unselfish play. Have his head up, read the defense. Get as close as you can to the basket, right? That's the point. I mean, one team right now, Troy, is launching from deep. USC has obviously taken the opposite route. Andy Enfield and coaching staff said, we are going to establish our game inside the paint. We're going to worry about threes later. Put the foul on Melton off the bench. His first, second on USC. Let's see if they can use a little full court press to jump start their first half. A piece against McLaughlin, breaks the timeline, takes it all the way at Metu, got to his chest and got to the rim. That's textbook right there. That's exactly what you teach young perimeter players. Drive the ball, jump into the chest of the big, see if you can put pressure on the official to make that call. McLaughlin coming downhill, in and out dribble on his way to the floater. First points for Jordan McLaughlin, and they fall back into his own look here. And Jonah Matthews at the top. And this isn't just any normal 2-3, just because of the length of every single player on the court. Pocket pass from Peace. Feeding Morovic. That was sweet. That was just too easy. I mean, you allow two dribble baseline move, and nobody moved for USC defensively. Troy came to play. Devon Walker creating a turnover. Right here, Jamezi Metsu goes for the fake, and then the weak side is just a step too late. I think they're all worried about the three-point shooting right now, JB. And so when they put it on the deck, they're all trying to close out the shooters, take away passing lanes. Instead, they give up an easy one. Uh, visiting Trojans hit four of their first six from behind the arc, and that's why some of those closeouts may have been extended. Yep. And now attacking the rim. A plus nine on undefeated USC. Juan Davis Jr. back in. That's a good sign for Troy. Travels. He I mean, left with that right ankle earlier. Yeah, that's right. It's good to see him back if you're a Troy fan. How many travels have we seen with guys shuffling the feet this year? It has been a point of emphasis. It's something that I know that most of the Pac-12 head coaches that I've spoken with have re-emphasized to their guys. They need to watch that. McLaughlin loves that left to right crossover. He's going to the free throw line. I, I don't disagree necessarily with cleaning it up along the perimeter, yeah. but if emphasis is to increase the entertainment of the game and the scoring of the game, that area of emphasis <laughs> kind of counteracts it, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. And I feel the same way about the way that they're calling big on big post ups. I mean, they're talking about cylinders. I feel bad. I, I feel like the bigs have been held to a, an impossible, a higher standard than the perimeters. It's so difficult to stay out of foul trouble, especially when you're only given five fouls. I think we need to increase it to six, maybe keep some of the stars in the game instead of watching from the sidelines. McLaughlin gets the free throws. He's on four for the night. USC has trimmed it to a seven-point deficit. Here's Holloman with the basketball. Morvik sets the high screen. Uh, Melton recovering defensively. Sean Hopkins makes his first appearance, and the sophomore from Finland throws it out of bounds. It was an impressive defensive possession by multiple USC Trojans. In particular, DeAnthony Melton, I, I feel like, is the best perimeter defender, even though he's just a freshman. I watched him at Crespi last year. actually broadcasted his state championship game. And he's coming off back-to-back -back state championships. Elijah Stewart is back, and he finds range. First so, bucket for USC's leading score. So Wesley Person, junior, for Troy has the green light. And Elijah Stewart is the exact same for the USC. He's coming off screens ready to shoot. He's hunting the three-point line. Two-pointers are his second option. Peace rejects the screen, now hits the top of the key. Juan Davis Jr. missing strong. Metsu secures for USC. Melton. I saw you shake your head there. Shot selection going early. Well, there was only one dribble handoff exchange, and that was it. The defense did no work. They just stared at DeAnthony Melton. Amorovic and Troy, they continue to fire from all five spots on the floor. 
Melton gets through traffic, hits the wing. Stewart, you said he was hunting. Off the mark here. Yeah, he's not running for layups and dunks unless it's very obvious. He wants to find that three-point line and launch him. Got a deflection there. Right back into the hands of Moravik, who launches again. The USC touched it last. So we hit our under-12 timeout. But Troy still high for the Cal Golden Bears, 25 points. And he's been healthy, on again, off again. They could really use him in the lineup on a nightly basis. And 27 in a row now for Cal at Haas, protecting their court again. As we resume, it's 19-15 to 15, Troy with a record of 6-4 and four out of the Sun Belt where they were picked ninth out of 12 teams. UT Arlington the favorite there. UT Arlington, the team that be as Wesley hits his fourth three-pointer of the half, and we're not even halfway through, JB. And that was a knuckleball. Yeah, it was. He normally has better rotation. I was going back to UT Arlington in the Sun Belt Conference. They beat St. Mary's in Moraga by double digits, so that team is for real. McLaughlin circling off that high screen, and Stewart sends it back his way. As he goes to the floor, 10 to shoot. Elijah going baseline with some English. Rakosovic in the boards, still after it. Nice hustle. And Troy gets the basketball. This is the second time we've seen Elijah Stewart put the ball on the deck and try and put a little bit too much ketchup and mustard on that hot dog. I'd like to see him not avoid contact. Right here, he's avoiding contact, hoping not to get hit. Instead, put the onus on the officials. Put you, put, you know, he, he needs to go to the line and finish that instead of trying to make the highlight reel. Is a good free throw shooter, knocking down 83% on the season. Saw some zone for USC. They're back to the man here. And DeAnthony Melton, number 22, is taking on the personal assignment of trying to guard the person. Rakosovic gets the block in the half court, going against Bernardo. A four blocks for Troy, three for USC. Halfway home in the opening segment. Matthews attacking with the left handed dribble, lost his footing and turned it over. And Rakosovic just doing a nice job of sliding his feet and again waiting till the last second. Jordan Varnado, Varnado is only six foot six. And so he's going to have to use pump fakes and, and try and shoot over the top instead because he can't jump over you. So you just got to stay disciplined and wait for the right time. Bernardo goes to work on Rakosovic again, secures a second chance, and got it. Jordan Varnado, seven points for Troy. Well, he's averaging 16 points, and he leads his team in minutes, but he only plays 26 a night, so this, this guy is very efficient. John Hughes starting to pull his shooting percentages up after a rocky start to his USC career. A freshman from Santa Monica. And just the other night versus Pepperdine, I swear he hit two threes in that left corner. That is his spot, and he just went, went back there again. A person feeling it. The mark with this. Where was your sweet spot on the floor? Everywhere. No, I know, but, like, where did you really like to catch it? Everywhere. <laughs> no, really. <laughs> really, everywhere. I got off the bus, and I was like, oh, th th this spot looks good. Yeah, this spot's really nice, too. But this is Jonah Matthews. That's a sweet spot, right? Left corner has his hands and his feet ready. How about in the league with the broken three-point line? Did you take advantage of the short corner? Oh, yeah, short yeah. corner. No, no doubt. So there, there we go. Yeah, in the NBA, I amped out in those, Let me ask you those short corners. Why, why not expand the professional court to make room for a complete arc? I, I couldn't agree with you more. You're a smart guy, JB. You're a lot smarter than you look. You know that? That's what my wife says. But I, I agree. I, a lot of times we do things in sport just out of tradition. That's the way it's always been. Why can't we just expand the court, give guys more space? If we're so, you know, pro-offense, that would be a very simple adjustment that we could all make. Well, let's face it. When your point guards are 6 five now and you're yeah. playing stretch fours, this is the way the game has gone. Why not make more room on the court? Yeah, Russell Westbrook needs a little bit more room so he can get 40, 20, <laughs> and 16 per night. Metsu hits another triple-double tonight for Russell Westbrook, by the way. I've been really impressed with Chemezi Metu. We talk to coaches all the time, and they're always talking up to their guys. Hey, this guy gets in the gym, and he works, and he works, and he works. Well, Chemezi Metu, his work is paying off. It, uh, it reminds me a little bit of Reed Travis at Stanford, who's taking his game to the next level. Chemezi's a guy 
But hard work paying off. I feel like we should recognize those guys. Nice job in the offseason. Look at the Trojans. That person to knock him off the three-point line. He's able to put it down and get to the rack. And 15 of Troy's 26. JB, he is not that fast. But when you have a flamethrower attached to your right shoulder, that means everybody's going to close you out all the way to your chest. It's going to make it easier to get to the rim. Foul on the floor against McLaughlin. He is one of seven Trojans who have scored here to this point. But they only have 20 in the team column, so that means no one has scored more than four points individually. It goes to show you, I mean, we talked about in the open, this is a well-balanced attack. Right now, it's the defense that's letting the Trojans down. They're over-pursuing, they're not communicating, they're allowing open three-point shots, and now this Troy University Trojan team is very confident, and they're playing with nothing to lose. The foul is on Baker. His first, but it puts USC now in the bonus for the final 7-17 as McLaughlin gets a second. And talk about the USC defense. It's been strong. Opponents averaging yeah. fewer than 67 per night, shooting below 39% from the floor against their length and athleticism. Trouble in the backcourt here for Troy. They get it over the top to Baker. He puts his foot to the floor and kisses it off glass. Kevin Baker, he's a guy that's only made two two-point shots all year that is his third two-point basket he is strictly a three-point shooter but that time again over pursuit by usc defensively mclaughlin hiding behind those high screens lets it go from three and misses just two made threes for the trojans baker that's there what he is. wants that's exactly what he wants met to all alone for the board and he'll bring it up himself look at chemezi metsu drive and kick mclaughlin you bet That'll be on the highlight reel for Chemezi Metu, expanding his repertoire a little bit. I didn't know he could grab a rebound and lead the break, but Jordan McLaughlin was fine with it, spotting up. Look, Jordan McLaughlin to me, JB, is one of the more unheralded players. I know he's on the point guard watch list and all this stuff, but he's a guy that's rarely talked about consistently night in. He is the orchestrator of this well-balanced attack for USC. Bernardo going to the free throw line, and McLaughlin's challenge is different this year as Metu takes over the point guard role in transition. I mean, this play was nice, but uh, I mean, I'm Jordan McLaughlin. I'm like, all right, Chemezi, that was sweet, but next time, why don't you let me do what I do <laughs> and you do what you do, all right? I'll throw up the rafters, you dunk it, let me run the break. Uh, 6.03 to go before our State Farm halftime report as Troy hits the free throw line. A lot to recap on a busy Saturday of hoops and the Conference of Champions. The Bruins cruising over Ohio State in Vegas to stay undefeated, the number two team in the country. And Lowry Markinen and the Wildcats able to hang on late. I was going towards uh, McLaughlin and the role he's playing at point guard this year, looking a little bit different without Julian Jacobs and Kate and Reinhardt as floor spacers. You know, Jacobs was so good at attacking. Yep. Jordan's got the ball in his hands a lot more this year. But he's so smooth. He makes great decisions. His assist to turnover ratio last year was good. This year, it's off the charts good. One of the best in the entire conference. Not better than 3-1 to one assist to turnover ratio over USC's last six from McLaughlin. And they get it over here. A seven assists on eight made field goals for USC, including that dish from Metu to McLaughlin. Let's see if they can close the gap here in the final six minutes of the half. And I had the pleasure of working with Jordan McLaughlin. I was a member of the coaching staff for a Pac-12 All-Star team. And Jordan is such a great kid, very bright, understands where everybody is supposed to be, a true leader. Metsu got a mouse in the house there but couldn't capitalize. Here's a second oh. chance, and he rips it with the right. Like that's how you finish an offensive rebound instead of just trying to kiss it off the glass. Take it through the arms and the chest of the defense. Man, I wish I was young and could jump like that. The game of basketball would have been a lot easier. 7-2 wingspan fully expanded <laughs> on that slam. Do you know what your wingspan is by any chance, JB? <laughs> what is it like? 6-2 maybe. 5-11. Oh, 6-2. Okay, we'll go with that. Head up. Aaron behind the back in transition, leaning with the right. The old school flavor from Shaquan Aaron. That reminded me of the two that Elijah Stewart tried, the underhand scooper like George the Iceman Gervin. Right there, Aaron. He's a slippery guy. I mean, he's really slender, obviously, but he just squeezes through those crevices in the defense. 
Four and a half to go, and it's a new game. USC has battled back to tie Troy. Two guys close out the ball right there. Big mistake. Walker missing. He did draw iron, so a new clock for the visitors. Person tried to throw it down. It was kicked by Rakosevic. Here's Chemezi following his own miss. And listen. <laughs> That's a rim battler right there. Is it 7-2 wingspan? Yes. That's what he said? He had the initial mismatch on the post up, and then I think he realized that he always has a mismatch <laughs> because of how athletic and long he is. Hit the four-minute mark here. Baker with the basketball. Troy inside. Made him block it, but he did alter. Yeah, I feel like that should have been goaltending, and that's... <laughs> That's what Troy Coach is, is talking about right there. He slapped the backboard. Talking about Chemezi Metu. Might have altered that shot down there. Rakosevic and the USC Trojans get into second chance opportunities, and they have the lead. Four points for Rakosevic. And Troy's led for, what, nearly 12 minutes of this opening half? As many as nine, their advantage. This man built it, Wesley Person. Tend to shoot. Baker with six over Metu. Oh, come cow. on. <laughs> if you're Chemezi Metu, we've already talked about Kevin Baker. He is a three point shooter. Again, he's only scored three two point shots all season. You have to know who you're guarding. I know that was a lucky shot. He banked it, but that's exactly the shot that he wanted. Make him do something else. Metu's calling for it. This is as aggressive as I have seen him offensively. A rebounding foul as Aaron was all tied up with Jeremy Holloman. And so we'll take our final media time out of the first half here. USC took the lead briefly. Troy back on high side. It's in USC sweatshirts for the whole family. Bring them with you. I didn't go to USC. I went to Stanford. Well, you said ugly, right? And oh, I mean, yeah, okay. Well, some cow ones. Some ugly golden bear sweaters. And two and a half to go here in this opening half. Troy putting a bit of a challenge USC's way. Undefeated, 9-0. Top 25 in the country. Holloman trying to turn the corner against Rakosevic. Oh. Low percentage shot, but he got it. Look, that's a prerequisite shot for all littles in the game of basketball. you got to have a floater because if you play against elite competition, they're going to have multiple guys who are 6'10 and athletic like USC has. How are you going to be able to score? Elijah Stewart filling it up. And we're back to level. Six points for Stewart. Two minutes to go. Renato calling for it against Metu. Oh, he picked up his dribble. And he pushed in and stole it. Chemezi Metu has been the brightest star for USC in this opening half. Stewart didn't catch it cleanly. Didn't matter. And Chemezi couldn't save it. Back over to Troy. And this is that prerequisite float right here. When you get in the paint, you can't just finish at the rim. That is a difficult. That was a falling away. But then Elijah Stewart has the answer for the Trojans. From deep, you have to mark number 30 in white. He is easily their most potent shooter. Jordan McLaughlin pretty good too. Shaquan Aaron very streaky, but Elijah is their best guy. Holloman lets it fly. Jamie Holloman puts Troy back in front by three. He's got five. And speaking of best guy from deep, He's shooting 50% Holloman is for Troy. So those numbers are going up. This is a guy that doesn't play a lot of minutes, but very efficient from the land of plenty. How about the hits? Rakosevic just volleyballs it over to Metu. <laughs> it's just the way they drew it up. They're like, we're going to throw it, make him deflect it. It's going to go. SC is better than Washington in almost every phase of the game, except for the fact that Washington has Markel Fultz, one of the most productive players in all of college basketball. So we might have missed the boat a little bit on USC. But, you know, look, those media polls really don't mean anything. They don't mean anything to us, and they don't, certainly don't mean anything to the players and coaches, except maybe some motivation. So in a, in a way, they should be thanking us. USC should be thanking you and I right now for estimating them. Holloman had it ripped. Matthews down the floor. A little burst to the rim, nice and Rakosevic follow. follows. So the early three-point shooting for Troy was the story, and now what has developed 
JB is second chance opportunities. USC taking an advantage of their height and their athleticism. Their best play for USC right now is just to throw it up to the rim and crash the boards. A 10 of their 38 points on second chance opportunities as you've described. Here's a three wow. from Jeremy Holloman to end the half and appropriate because that's how they built their lead. It was as many as nine and they go in plus two after 20 minutes. He's nine and no mark on the line here in this second half. And they got Cornell here on Monday, then two games in Vegas to round out their non-league schedule. Jumped into the top 25 this week following last Sunday's win over Pepperdine. Here's Person. A zone look for USC to begin the second half. Person extending his range. It rattles. And there's Stewart with the board. That ball was halfway in. And if he would have made that, I actually would have predicted that Andy Enfield would have called a timeout. Because you allow the best player for Troy, who was red hot in the first half, to get a pretty open look on the very first possession. Met at it swipes. He got away with a foul. Tugged the jersey of Baker. And there's the personal on Chemezi Metu. Quick hands by Troy defensively. I've been impressed at how many deflections. First on Metu. I actually anticipated that Troy would play more zone. They haven't played any zone at all. They have a 1-3-1 one, one matchup zone that they like to implore sometimes when they're a little bit undersized. But they've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with USC thus far. Attacking the 2-3 of USC defensively. They hit inside with Jordan Vernardo. Their leading score now into double figures with 10. I think that matchup with Vernardo against Rakosovic is much better for Vernardo than when he goes against Chemezi Metu. I think they might continue to attack that on that next possession, JB. McLaughlin takes the ball screen behind the back. That was quick. That was slick. And Oof. there he throws it in on the put. Look. Jordan McLaughlin was the leading scorer for USC, and I thought it was kind of a silent nine points that he had. I didn't really notice him that much. I look for Jordan to be much more assertive, maybe take control of this game, especially in the offensive end. He's a low-impact scorer, got to the free-throw line a bit in that first half. Here's the skip pass from Troy. Person with 15 in the opening half and a long two to build the lead to four. And right there, that's okay. Like for Andy Anfield, he can't be mad at that. You run their best shooter off the line. You make him pump fake, take a one dribble, contested two-point shot. Sometimes, JB, that's the best you can do, and they're going to make a shot anyways. The Stewart answer rebound Hicks. Alex Hicks on the defensive glass. He wants to shoot the three. Metsu daring him to pull and knocks it down. Kevin Baker, and there's the timeout you forecast, Casey. Not even three minutes in to the second half. Early, I know firsthand as a shooter myself, if I'm locked in on the rim, you might as well not even be there. I'm not seeing your hand. All I see is the net. Now, Troy started three of four in this half. USC just one of three as McLaughlin gets rejected by the leading shot blocking team in the Sun Belt. Person gets to the left hand in transition. 19 to lead the way for Wesley Person. And this is a confident basketball team. When you let a team come to your home arena who's not expected to win and they start having success, they start puffing their chest a little bit, this is going to be difficult for USC to turn off the faucet that is Troy's offense right now. Nine points to match their largest lead. McLaughlin can't put it down. A rebounding foul going the other way. Rakosovic takes the personal. And right here, Jordan McLaughlin trying to make something happen. And I'm not blaming him. I think he's one of the guys that should take this team on his shoulder. But then the poor defensive transition, nobody steps up. They're just content to allow that, uh, Troy to drive their hip. And they just want to block shots at the rim right now. They need to go back to the fundamentals. Stop the ball. If you're going to switch on defense, talk it loud, have hands up. Like right now, Chemezi Metu, he's just staring at the ball with no active hands. Wow. Pulls down a second chance, and he's going to the free throw line. It was the second foul on Rakosovic. He left. Melton is in, and here comes Jonah Matthews as well. How about the pass there? No ball pressure. That's what I'm talking about. So Chemezi Metu is guarding Alec H Alex Hicks, who is not a three-point shooter. So if you're not going to guard him, the very least that you can do is 
pressure the ball. If you're going to play off, at least be a deterrent. He was neither, and he just surveyed the, the court and made an easy pass. A second personal foul on Elijah Stewart. He thought he was coming off the floor, but instead it's Shaquan Aaron subbed out. Now, USC's got a ton of firepower. They can come back from a 10-point yeah. deficit. The only question to me is whether or not they can cool off Troy. That's right. That's a good point. USC got down 12-2 to to start against uh, BYU at the Staples Center, and they got right back in it, mostly from Shaquan Aaron, who had four threes in that first half. So they've come back from deficit four. They start like one of 17 yes. in that contest. one of 17. Look at Troy get ended. But they blow the layup, unable to build on an 8-0 run here early in this second nice half. Take. Matthews off the bench with the left in position. And showing that he's more than just a spot-up corner three-point shooter. I love the take right there. Aggressive and with the left hand. Here's Hicks again with Metu sagging off defensively. Baker gets a clean three. Stewart boards. Matthews trailing, thought about it. Draws two and throws it away. A set turnover of the game for USC, and we'll take our under-16 timeout here. Jonah Matthews, a turnover there, but... They're in the danger zone. They are down eight points right now, and I feel like Chemezi's kind of skating a little bit and not using his length that we saw in that life-elevated package. Uh, he and Jordan McLaughlin have played the most minutes for USC, 22 apiece as we're back underway. Their deficit eight points with a mark of 9-0 on the season. Nice bump there from Jonah Matthews. Very physical. And he blew up that play down there, JB. They were trying to go across screen to a big. He didn't let it happen. Person dribbles into a tough three. Stewart secures. Throws ahead. Melton. De Anthony oh. Melton stepping through and stepping to the line. That was one of the more awkward Euro steps. He had a free bucket here. If he just goes strong side, instead seeks out the contact. Right here. Just go straight up. Wesley Person had already left the ground to try and block that shot. A second personal foul on Person. Melton gets the roll. You would have loved playing on these rims in college, by the way, Casey. These are some of the friendliest, softest rims in all of college basketball. And Maples Pavilion has some pretty soft ones. And we also had that bouncy floor that they got rid of. Remember, that added at least two to three inches off my, like, 26-inch vert. I used to get seasick watching you and <laughs> Mark Madsen and the Collins Twins play at Stanford. Yeah, they got rid of that thing about seven or eight years ago. I think they, they were scared that it was breaking people's feet or something. Holloman denied by Metu. Bernardo goes into his chest. Only six foot six puts a foul on Chemezi. And Chemezi does a nice job initially. That's perfect defense right here, but watch the second effort. Your, your hands need to stay vertical and they go horizontal. That is an automatic foul, no question about it. The second foul on Metu, fourth of the half on USC, second upcoming for Bernardo, who's a 73% free throw shooter. He's looking right now like, what did I do? He, he just reenacted what he did. You have to be vertical. They've told, I was in at Stanford practice when I had the referees in for their, before they even played an exhibition game. And that was one of the, besides the traveling violation, watch the feet shuffling of the perimeter players, the cylinder and staying vertical, that was one of the points of emphasis. Ametsu gets it from McLaughlin. And they exchange fouls. Bernardo just got him at the other end, and now Bernardo takes the personal on defense. A foul on the floor, so an inbound coming from the baseline. Second on Jordan Bernardo. This might be a little thing, but I really like when coaches, after a guy got a bad foul or what he interpreted as a bad foul, go to him on the offensive end. Allow him to establish a rhythm and maybe get rid of some of that frustration. And that's exactly what they're doing right now. They are force-feeding Chemezi Metu to get him ignited on the defensive end. I think they've just forced Phil Cunningham to get Bernardo out of the game. That's his yeah. third to this trip. And here comes... Juan Davis Jr. to get him as Met two steps to the free throw line. Met two leading this team at eight route rebounds per night, two blocks. You know what we haven't seen from Met two except I believe in the first five minutes of the game is his medium range jump shot. And when I was digging, doing research for this game, JB, I, I found something that I thought was pretty interesting. I would have said coming into this game that Thomas Welsh, the 
the starting center for the UCLA Bruins, yep. is the best medium-range jump shooter in the Pac-12. However, this year, according to HoopMath.com, Chemezi Metu is the best two-point jump shooter in the entire conference. You know, he shoots 58% compared to Thomas Welsh at 53. And that's a real weapon for Chemezi, and we've only seen him shoot one jumper. A defending Baker here, and a late whistle. That's going to be his third. But both post players have been taken off the floor, likely, midway through this second half. Right, if I were a guard, I would just drive, drive, drive some more and jump into, just like Baker does here. And there's not a whole lot Chemezi Metu can do. I feel, again, I feel bad. I've been hard on Chemezi, especially the last, you know, five minutes of this second half. But I genuinely feel bad for some of the bigs on the foul calls that they're getting when guards are just literally just jumping into them and throwing up a shot at the board and getting, getting rewarded. Let's see how long he sits. Checks out with 14.26 where Kosovic comes to get him. By the way, to follow up on your great point about the range game, that's going to play well in terms of his scouting report for the next level because no, no they question. know how he defends. They know he can dunk. He leads the team with 16 dunks coming into the night. Stewart with a nice mid-range game as nice well. Rakosovic, an offensive rebound, fresh off the bench. And that was Walker reaching in. Yeah, Chemezi Metu is uh, the high-rated NBA draft pick on this team for that very reason. He can impact the game in many different ways, not just a one-dimensional player. And he's still growing. He still has a raw post game, and it's only going to get better. But he has so, much, so many things that you can't teach, right? I mean... There's only so many things you can teach, like 7-2 wingspan, his feel for the game, his touch around the rim. Those are things that you cannot teach. Timing for shot blocking yeah. is impeccable. He right. added 10 pounds this offseason. McLaughlin slashing nice. and finishing with the right. 13 for McLaughlin. He's going to have, have to help bring these Trojans back. And he knows it. I mean, you know, he, he's a quiet person, an introverted guy more uh, than an outgoing guy, but he knows that with Chemezi Metu on the bench now, JB, he's going to have to be the man. Baker backs it up with 10. On ball from Davis Jr. He rejects it. Coming downhill. Wow. Feeds opposite. And Devon Walker gets the dunk. By my count, he drew three white shirts. Okay? That's a recipe for disaster for you, UFC. Rakosovic with a seal. And they get the bucket back. Defensively, USC now, they got to look each other in the eye. They have to trust one another. And they haven't done so up until this point. A person off the high screen. Walker puts it down. A shot with nine on the clock. Jeremy Holloman hits. Holloman's one of those guys that, you know, he only averages 15 minutes a game, 9.4 points. A guy, if you give him space, he will make you pay. And here's Jordan McLaughlin. He realizes that this game is starting to get out of hand a little bit, and he's got to make a play. And here's drawing three defensive players is going to lead to a dunk or a foul almost every single time. But here, at least Rakosovic gets it back on this end with a nice post seal and finish. Oh, well, they could use some more easy ones like that, USC. Aaron with a long two, <laughs> and the beneficiary of the kiss. He's pushing the other way. Casey, here's something to watch. USC just put the 16 foul on Troy as Troy gets all the way to the glass. But Man. if you're trying to chip away, getting into the bonus early in the second half can be your friend. Oh, that's that's big time. You said it. I mean, how many games has De'Anthony Melton misses for three, but looks like USC is going to get another possession here. Yeah, no, I think, they're going to change. Uh, I think there's a situation where Darren White, the official, had his decision yeah. between either calling a foul on Elijah Stewart or giving the basketball to Troy. Oh, watch this. I see where you're going here. This Pushing is kind of a pro back. thing to do. Oh, I don't think that's a foul on Elijah Stewart. I think that's a, a botched call. But I, I agree with your assessment of it. I do believe that's what happened. But I do believe that is a bad call right there, a bad break for USC. Let's see what Troy can do with that, this extra possession here. You mentioned Holland makes the most of his minutes. He's gotten above his average now in double figures. This is person with the basketball, screen from Davis. Lost the handle momentarily. 12 to shoot for Troy. They're kicking it all over on this trip. And USC comes away with the basketball. Shaquan Aaron. Rakosovic nice. got knocked. Two, 
So here's where the bonus comes into play. Rakosevic at the free throw line when we come back. I think they struggled. They actually, uh, one of their best players went out in the first month of the year and hasn't returned. Catherine, Catherine Plummer, a Southern California kid, got the National Freshman of the Year this year, really stepped up and filled that void. Congratulations to the Lady Car. That's awesome, man. And that's their second national title in as many weeks. The men's soccer team won against Wake Forest in a penalty shootout. It was awesome. Congratulations to the women of Troy as well on the women's soccer side. Elizabeth got the free throw line, trims it to seven. So here we go. 12 minutes to play. Can USC remain undefeated? Reminded that UCLA and USC, the only two remaining undefeated Pac-12 teams, two of six in the country. And Troy shooting at seven of 13 in this second half. And they turn it over. Eighth turnover for visitors, and here's an opening for USC. An excellent defensive possession. You know that's what Andy Anfield was talking about. I mean, I'm sure he drew up an offensive play that we're about to see right now, but the majority of the huddle was likely spent talking about effort, using your length, and getting this Troy team to turn the basketball over, and they get one on the very first possession out of that timeout. Metu sees the second defender, throws it to the rim, and we're going offensive. the other way on a clear-out foul. And that's Rakosevich, and he's laughing it off. But watch the two hands, watching the top of your screen, two hands in the back. That's, I mean, you could say that's cheap, but the referee is standing right there, and he has to call that. I mean, there's two hands in the back. He didn't necessarily push him over, JB, but he had two hands on him. So as you saw, Metu is back. He's playing with three personal fouls. That's three on Rakosevic as well. A person didn't even look at the rim there on that wing catch. The first time in the history of his life <laughs> that that happened. And feeds it inside now. Again, Rakosevic playing with three fouls. Nice he team. took a healthy swipe <laughs> at that shot from Bernardo. And you sit back. And staying disciplined right here. Just you're allowed one arm. That's fine, Rakosevic. But two, and then and he spikes that off of Bernardo's shoulder. That's actually a nice call by the officials to reward USC with that basketball. So coming out of the timeout, they get two stops defensively now. Can they continue to trim this Troy Lee? Metu facing up and lost it. Defended by Alex Hicks. Holloman up the floor. Stopped in transition. Zone here from USC. I'm surprised they're going zone on a missed shot or a turnover. Jay. Very difficult to match up with a team. Unless you've made a basket, it's, it's just requires a lot more communication to match up in a zone. Aaron behind the back. Threads the two, and it's down to a five-point deficit. Eight points for Shaquan Aaron. And like I mentioned, against BYU, they're down 12-2 to two early in that game, and Shaquan Aaron just took that game over with his ability to create his own shot, go one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe he feels like this is his, his time. That was a great post feed by Person. Spun it in to a posting Vernardo. Oh, that is a difficult shot. Crossover behind the back off of one leg. He made it look easy. A second foul on Aaron. Both teams now in the penalty for the final quarter of this contest. Oh, he shoots that ball. Did that bring rain? High. My goodness. In, so I played seven years in Germany, JB. They would call that shot right there a Buckstein. Ein Buckstein. I know Translation? Lavin was you know, it's a UFO or whatever. <laughs> Is that what he says? It's a UFO? I mean, Bachstein, it's a building block. It's a brick. A building block would be the uh, <laughs> the literal translation of Ein Bachstein. You got the second one, though. <laughs> it's going to be fun. 61-55, Troy in Troy. There he goes. Now Hicks mm. controls the defensive glass. Daniel Peace pushing. Nice On rotation, pass. Holloman turned it down. Peace with the ball fake. Goes right at Metu. He avoids fourth personal foul. That's huge. Jordan McLaughlin Ooh. with the handle in transition. Denied at the rim, but he's got two free throws. Isn't he fun to watch in the open court? He's not going to blow by you with speed, but he's got people on skates right there. Metu, a nice job avoiding the foul. We talked about that. 
And right here, Jordan McLaughlin, he, he glides. You know, again, he doesn't overpower you with his leaping ability. Um, he, he's, he's fast, but he's not incredibly fast. But he plays with such poise and great change of pace, JB. It's just what, if you're a young player, you want to play the point guard position, one of the best things you can do is learn how to play with a change of pace. You don't have to be the fastest guy in the gym to get to the rim. It's like being a starting pitcher. Yeah, absolutely. Just have, have two speeds. 13 of 14 at the free throw line are the USC Trojans. They've got it back to two possessions here. In the zone looking for another defensive stop. And we haven't seen number three in Maroon right here, Wesley Person Jr., get up a shot. I'm sure his trigger finger is itching. And this is a long two. Jonathan Matthews controls. USC on an 8-3 nice run. Pass. McLaughlin open. Missed the three. Melton hands on it, and I think Aaron took it away. Does he get a block? Does Shaquan Aaron get a block for swatting his own teammate right there? But USC opportunistically with the pressure defense on that outlet pass they're going to get an extra possession out of it now melton had a point blank put back it looks to me that's just a, a nice play there from chemezi metsu and right here watch it looks like blocks is a, yeah but here we got two usc trojans melton and aaron fighting for that ball and but melton was trying to score that ball he was trying to catch it in the air and it gets knocked away by shaquan aaron so a new clock for usc this is aaron with melton off the rhythm dribble it's a two a long two so it's a 10-3 burst from the trojans one possession game with eight and a half to go Big shot from Melton, and we've seen, you watch their Texas A&M game, they were down late in that game, and it was DeAnthony Melton, the freshman, who basically won that game for USC. Baker, bam. Ooh. 13 points for the junior guard. Met two trailing, attacks with the right. That's a foul. And the putback this time, clean by Melton, as you're right, Andy Enfield was imploring the officials for that foul. I mean, Alex Hicks, number 30, rode Chemezi Metsu almost like a horse out of the lane right there. And for all the calls that have gone against Chemezi, I, I think he earned that last one, but it worked out anyways for USC. And the Trojans back to the man defensively, and a hip check from Shaquan Aaron. And Troy is in the bonus, shooting a one and one when we come back. Well, DeAnthony Melton is a freshman, folks, but you wouldn't know it by watching him play in this game. He is trying to put this Trojan team. Well, one and one here, both teams in the bonus. And he missed the front end, and Melton gets in there for the board. Yeah, he skied for that rebound, JB. Right teeth of the transition defense, recovering is Holloman for the block. Again, Andy Info working the officials, trying to get DeAnthony Melton a couple of free throws. But the freshman, I, he doesn't look anything like a freshman to me. And Troy shooting oh. over the zone and getting a second champ opportunity. Walker puts it back. Look, if you're USC, Chemezi Metu can't be expected to get every single rebound. They got to come. Right now, this USC lineup is small. They have Elijah Stewart. And DeAnthony Melton playing forwards here. Nice flash from Metsu and hit him for a quick two. Back to a three-point deficit. Metsu with 11. So much basketball left to be played. A lot of adjustments to be made. USC sticking with this zone. They like it. Even on missed shots, they've been going back to it. Trying to protect Chemezi Metsu from foul trouble. That's the biggest reason why I think they're sticking with it. Now Baker split the two at the top of the zone. Couldn't get it cleanly to the wing. So here's Holloman with six to shoot. Alex Hicks a bit beyond his range. Skying for the board. There's Stewart to help out Metsu. Matthews on the move. Nice Drops pass. it down. Melton to Metsu! What a beautiful pass from DeAnthony Melton. And the finish was awesome too, but let's give credit to the pass. DeAnthony Melton has been so impressive. One of the best six men in the conference. Where would they be right now without number 20?
the year. He has yet to start a game. He has come off the bench in every single game. I actually imagine that's going to change later tonight uh, when they play UNLV. But DeAnthony Melton deserves to be on that list. To me, the third best six man in the conference. And he's got the Trojans back within one. A chance of defense here at the Galen Center. Oh. Long three by Baker off the heel. And look at USC bow the board. That's a hero shot right there. Not a good decision by Baker playing exactly into the hands of USC's defense. They will gladly surrender a contested long three-point from a guy that only shoots 37%. Stewart puts it down, and it's a foul on the floor. He can help USC retake the lead as he shoots the one and one. Put the foul on Davis Jr. That's his first. Eighth on Troy. So two more one and ones for USC before they hit the double bonus. Hasn't been the best offensive game for Elijah. Only a couple of buckets tonight. But here's a way that you can contribute on the offensive end when you're struggling. Get to the foul line. Kind of recenter, refocus your mental frame. See a couple go through. Look, in, in basketball, JB, there is only one guaranteed unguarded shot. That's the free throw. Not the dunk, not a layup. Those can all be considered fouled. The only one that's the same in every gym across America is the foul shot. First lead for USC since the score was 38-37 in the first half. They have led for less than two minutes of this contest. How much you want to bet number three, Wesley Person Jr. tries to take it upon himself to shoot a shot on this possession. Backdoor find against the baseline of the zone and free throws for Devon Walker. Elijah Stewart with the foul. And too many Trojans defensively staring at the basketball and not. See, all three are just zoned in on the basketball. They don't have their heads on swivels like defensive linebackers. You got to see behind you. And right there, it, it cost him a trip to the foul line for Troy. It's not a bad foul by Stewart in the sense that he's 57% from the line is Walker, but it is Elijah's third personal. So he and Metu playing with three deep in this second half. See if Walker can connect on both. He does. That's a big trip. And a visiting gym for Devon Walker. A transfer from Florida. Played three seasons there under now Thunder head coach Billy Donovan. They played in a Final Four. They lost to Kemba Walker's UConn team in 2011. Elijah lights oh. it up from the corner. And we just talked about how quiet he's been. He went to the free throw line, he sinks two, and now he's back in rhythm. And right there, stepping into, that's his game, stepping into a good one. I'm matching the largest lead at just two points. Stewart to double figures. Baker gotcha. rocks into a long three. Metsu deflected. Walker secures, now drops it off, and it's pinned by Chemezi. Oh, what a defensive stand there by Chemezi. Trojans on a 9-2 run to take the lead. Uh, he just erases mistakes. Now, that was a, a bad offensive rebound there as he gets it on the other end. Chemezi Metu now, JB, doing it on both ends of the court. And we talked about this before. We saw flashes of it in the first half. I thought he had a lull where he was low on energy to start the second. He's back. 72 6 back on campus at USC where the Trojans have made six of their last seven field goal attempts to take their largest lead of the night against visiting Troy. 72 68 back at the Galen Center. Wesley Person with the basketball sends it to the corner. Here's a baseline drive. Metu couldn't get to that one. Bernardo got Stewart up in the air, and that could be the fourth on Elijah Stewart. Yeah, I think they're going to get that one on Stewart. Here, a baseline drive. Too easy. No resistance. You know what, JB, I actually think that Troy missed that shot because they thought Chemezi Metu was going to come erase it. So that's one of those examples where just because Chemezi doesn't get the block doesn't mean that he didn't have an impact on the play. So many good shot blockers alter a lot more shots than they actually block. Another skying free throw from Bernardo. USC went on a 21-8 run to overcome a nine-point deficit over these last eight minutes. As long as this goes in the left-hand column, this could be good for them late in their non-conference to get a test here at home. 
Work on some late game execution before league play. Yeah, try telling that to the coaching staff right now. No, no, I only said that to you. Okay, I'll keep it a secret. <laughs> Andy's Andy Anfield's literally standing two feet from you, JB. I and won't look up. I don't. Want, <laughs> I don't want to see his reaction right. in case he heard me. I'm not good for the blood pressure here on the holiday season. No, but I, I actually agree with you, though. I, I mean, look, these teams are trying to get better, and the only way you get better is not by blowing people out by 20. Major mistake there by Melton. Can he cover it? He fouls in transition. And so Troy gets a couple of free throws, an opportunity to tie the game. Baker off the turnover, only at 58% for strike. An uncharacteristic mistake there by the freshman. And I can't give him all kinds of praise and say that he doesn't look like a freshman and then use his youth as an excuse when he messes up. He's a really smart basketball player that just misread that last play. Four assists and three steals to go with now 14 points for Baker. Chance to tie the game here at 72. And Troy led by as many as 10. Under 17 minutes to go. And here we are tied again for the fifth time tonight. Melton surveying gets it to McLaughlin across the timeline. Playing with Elijah Stewart, Jonah Matthews, and Chemezi Metu, the five for top 25, and, USC. And, JB, here's that 1-3-1 one, one defense that I was talking about. We have not seen it much. They break it out with almost three minutes to go in this game, trying to catch USC off guard. Full attack from Jordan McLaughlin. Well, it didn't fool him. He just took a look at that 1-3-1 one, one zone and said, there's going to be a gap somewhere. I'm going to find it. He's so good at that intermediate float game. Very impressive. Look how high they're extending on Person and Baker. Person dips inside now, floating from the elbow. Contested rebound winds up in the hands of Chemezi Metu. McLaughlin again driving the left side. Squeezes it into his post. Good look opposite, and Matthews could pay it off. Yeah, that's one of those possessions where, yes, you don't score, but you got the ball moving from side to side. You got it two touches in the paint before you get a corner three-point shot from Jonah Matthews. Holloman, Baker, and Person on the perimeter. Great drop-off. There's a two to tie it for Jordan Vernado. With this defensive lineup for USC, if you can draw Ch Chemezi Metu away from the basket, no one else is a block shot artist, although Elijah Stewart did have four block shots against Pepperdine. But tonight, I don't think he has any. They're not fearful, as long as they can see to stand around. you got to get Jordan McLaughlin somehow into the paint. I would rather have USC not settle for a three. Drive to the rim. They've been successful getting to the foul line. You called it. Here's their zone. Stewart in the corner, 15 to shoot. There you go. There's a paint touch, basically. Good flash by Aaron, but he came up short, secured by Jeremy Holloman. And Kevin Baker brings it down. 95 seconds left at the Galen Center. The USC's 9-0 starts on the line. Their best since 71. Bernardo finds the corner. Baker with five, leaves it for Holloman. Bam! A three-point lead for Troy. 13 for Jeremy Holloman. Metsu inside the free throw line. That had to go, and it did. Within one, a minute to play, oh, and Troy turns it over. Play by Elijah Stewart, catching Troy off guard there. Basically a one-man press. I mean, those are huge plays. This is a simple just get the ball to your big guy in the middle of the zone. Any zone, there's a soft spot in the middle. But Elijah getting them an extra possession here. They go right back and to the Barbasaw Clochet player of the game. Will they continue it? Looks like no. And Chemezi doing a little dance over there trying to convince the referee to let that one go. He's going to have to wait a year or maybe before he can let this count in the NBA in the college game. Man, that, hey, that was close, though. I think he deserved that was it. close. I think that was a fluid move. He was in the act. He's, but the hey, he's, have to earn it. he's the Barbasol player of the game. Should we let the referees know about that? Eh. I don't think they care. 
It's a clean look for Chemezi at the free throw line. Well, he'll have to earn it. 75% on his season. Good hit. Oh, I talked about his medium range jump shot. That's exactly what a free throw is. And he should be as confident as any big guy in the country to step up to that charity stripe and knock two down. And su subbing offense for defense right now, JB. They take Shaquan Aaron out and make sure they have Jonah Matthews, Elijah Stewart, and De'Anthony Melton. Whoa. Two huge plays by Elijah Stewart. Forces the inbound turnover. Now deflects it out for a new possession. Tied up with 48 seconds. McLaughlin around Metsu, crossing over, off oh glass, full lead, Jordan McLaughlin with 19. What a beautiful move, and Jordan is just stone-faced. There's no emotion. He knows that they have to get a stop. This game is far from over, JB. Person with the basketball, over to Baker. They go to the block. Spinning off of Metu, it's pinned by Stewart and swatted by Melton. Baker circling, Holloman stepped on the sideline and USC has the basketball. Multiple effort plays by multiple guys. How about this move from Jordan McLaughlin fading to his left for a right-handed shooter. My goodness, his crossover, you said it, Jamie, his crossover is deadly. How about this game-saving, potentially game-saving block by Elijah Stewart and De'Anthony Melton gets in there too. The Baker all over McLaughlin. He's fouled. Double bonus situation for USC trying to close out Troy with 13.6. I mean, have you seen three better consecutive non-scoring plays by a Pac-12 player this season than Elijah Stewart has made here in crunch time? I mean, you're going to pick up the box score tomorrow, JB, and you're going to look and say, Elijah Stewart struggled a little bit from the field today. No, 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 no. That's why box scores can often lie. They don't paint the full picture. Jordan McLaughlin wouldn't be at the line right now with an opportunity to put USC up four without Elijah Stewart and the effort plays that he's made tonight. USC trying to stay in that group of six, still undefeated in D1. UCLA across town got to 12-0 in Vegas against Ohio State. Two massive free throws for McLaughlin. Baker hustling. They need a shot up. Holloman rising over Stewart's. And a rebound should do it for De'Anthony Melton and USC on a 7-0 run to close out what they hope will be their 10th win. And it's hard to pick out one guy. We mentioned Elijah Stewart, and he deserves to mention. Jamezi Metu was our Barbasol player of the game. Jordan McLaughlin just doing what he does, steady as can be. Jonah Matthews hitting, coming in and playing within himself, hitting threes, and De'Anthony Melton playing like a senior. Only the third missed free throw of the night. They've needed nearly every single one of them. USC will pull it out against Troy, a game they trailed by double digits in this second half. Baker at the horn. What an effort for the visiting Trojans. They fall to 6-5 and five as they get close to Sunbelt play, but this was a tremendous test for Andy Anfield and company. Well, USC just got, just cracked the top 25, and this would have been a devastating blow to this team's confidence. Instead, they respond exactly right when they needed to they get multiple defensive stops, and then Jordan McLaughlin, Chemezi Metu carry them offensively. Elijah Stewart, man, he deserves special mention for getting USC a couple of extra possessions that eventually won the game tonight. You talked about Jordan McLaughlin being a low-impact score. How about a subtle 21 to lead all scores Oof. on this night? That's it. This is one of those ones that it, it was ugly. But if you're going to be a good team, possibly a great team in the Pac-12, you've got to win games where you don't bring your A game offensively. The USC trailed 77-74. With one minute left, they scored the final.